Welcome, everyone. I have Rebecca, the equity mistress, on the podcast today, and we are going to get into what is equity law and how does it all relate to spirituality, freedom, and the way we conduct our lives. Rebecca, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's really great to be here and to be talking about uh, these wonderful subjects that are so necessary for all of us to understand right now, especially to get us out of... um, the constraints that we're as a as a collective are finding ourselves in. So, absolutely. So. Absolutely. That's why I have you here. <laughs> so let's let's start with with the law as it relates to spirituality and how your own spiritual journey led you to equity law. Uh, yeah, so that's a really good question. Um there's uh this is both uh can be tackled in within a tangible way but also an ethereal way. Right. Um, so I just want to say that law um, comes from our common understanding uh, as people and which was first unwritten, which is what we know to be as common law. And then it became written into the Bibles, such as like the Torah. And and then these became the common practices that people used in order to fil- facilitate justice. So um, I learned that within my own process of understanding the legal versus the lawful system as I was going through this whole process into freedom. Um, So how it started off with me is, well, it's actually pretty interesting. So I'm sure many many of the people that watch you understand how darkness brings us more light if we know how to transmute it and to use it. And fortunately, I was brought into a family that had lots of trauma. And so at a young age, I learned how to meditate and it was about 16 years old. And then through that process, I got really good at the law of attraction and through um, manifestation. I was a big follower of Joe Dispenza, um, as well as all the other spiritual gurus that we see on the mainstream, like Eckhart Tolle. And what they taught me is how to be really present and really still uh, as any challenges came to surface. So that way that I could uh, shift out and to create a different experience. And by the time I was 24, I was really, really good at it. And so good at it. I, I created a free car, you know, um, free insurance, not having to pay for things. Um, the job that I ended up landing, which was a corporate job, you know, after I went to the university uh, with an electric company, and it was everything that I had asked for, the starting pay, the um, the department that I was filled with strong women so that I could learn um, how to be more of a stronger woman. So it was interesting. And then when I got into the corporation aspect of things, it was the electric company. I started learning within three or four years that uh, the lifestyle is so crazy. People don't <laughs> have to breathe, to be with their families. Mm. Uh, They end up having a deeper relationships and bonds with people that they work with and people in their own household. And um, because I was already so spiritual, it was easy for me within the first couple of years, but then I started to see myself start to to go away and I was becoming depressed. And then I started learning about chemtrails and also about what the electric system can do to the body. And it became very clear to me that I was not aligned with um, the things that I had to say to the public as part of my job. So I ended up uh, quitting my job and it was a huge deal, you know, especially for me being 24 years old. Um, I was making more money than both of my parents had, you know, growing up. I had an IRA, I had full insurance, you know, so people were like, you're crazy. What are you doing? (laughs) Stay what you're doing. You got something good. Um, but it was just so difficult to align myself to um, really become who it is that they were asking me to become. So um, right at that time, I ended up moving to New Mexico. And if you're you're familiar with New Mexico, Joey, it's a land of enchantment. It's definitely Absolutely. a place. Yeah, it's definitely a place to come and to work on your shadows and your shadow selves. And mm. surprisingly, Santa Fe sits right on top of a, a obsidian. So it makes sense. So I moved to Santa Fe and I was able to grant, I would grant myself some time to meditate on what is truth because so long in my past, I was always so, um, so fixated on what do I want? What do I want based on what the society is telling me that I should have? And then as I started getting more of those those things, I started realizing those things don't bring me happiness. And so when I focused on truth, that's when everything started to open up 
even deeper. Um, mm. I started getting into even deeper parts of my shadow parts that I didn't even know that were there. And uh, it was about a month later um, that I got introduced to Michael Tellinger, who is the uh, Ubuntu leader. He found all, all these am amazing uh, archaeological resources that, that show how the pyramids were made through sound. And in his own process of going uh, through controversies with the government, he started talking about his, his own court experiences. And then through it, started to convey that the banks don't operate uh, with uh, federal reserve notes. And that was like, what? What do you mean they don't operate with just cash? And he said they operate on promissory notes and that the birth certificate is a promissory note. And so that just blew my mind. And mm -hmm. then it completely um, opened up the store and I dug right in. And what, what I found so interesting the whole entire time was um, there's a lot, there's a good amount of people out there that are, are expressing specific processes and how to become free or how to tap into the wealth of your birth certificate. And of course I was running into those people and I'd find that when I started doing specific processes, spirit would stop me. No, don't do that. Yeah. The universe really? would be like, no. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. You know, and truth be told, when I was doing what I was told, I didn't really understand what I was doing or why I was doing it. And um, templates, you know, was yeah, I'd read the language, but I couldn't understand anything. Hmm. So it's been quite a process. It's been about seven years since I've been um, on this whole sovereignty kick. But nonetheless, hmm. uh, when I got into it, I got really angry. I found myself extremely pissed off with the world. Mm. I I went to complete hermetism. I just couldn't I couldn't deal with the fact that nobody wanted to listen to the fact that we were all uh, voluntarily enslaving ourselves, and that we were giving up our benefit to other things that don't exist that only exist on paper, and. Um, people were getting upset with me and I was losing friends and family members were considering me as crazy. So um, that was definitely a dark night of the soul of having to come even deeper, yeah. even clearer with what it is that I, what I wanted as well as what is it that spirit wanted to express through me and um, how that aligns to this greater picture of, of our own process of transformation that we're going through as a people on this earth. So yeah, within that whole process, it was crazy. I, I started becoming really against money. And then because of that, I be, became <laughs> homeless. You know, I just, I recognized really quickly how fast the feelings could could shift based on the, the what was going on on the outside if I wasn't careful and that would create my automatic reality. So it was through my own process of awakening within that process to be able to align myself to what truly is the truth that's really going to help. And through all the gurus that explain about how sovereignty is and, and, and how to do that and how to do that, the thing that I found was the only thing that works is if you know the law yourselves, you mm. have to find the law. You have to say, you have to see where it's written to be able to truly un to take in that information and to integrate it and to allow it to shift your reality so that you can start making a new different choice, a behavioral choice. So um, I know for me personally, I grew up with a family that was so fixated on not having money and having money, not having money, that the whole idea of lack permeated the whole family, that it would um, cause a lot of constraint. Mm. And that really bothered me. You know, I'm, I'm really a big fan of family. <laughs> about the whole business. And it became extremely obvious through my own awareness and my own presence that um, this whole system is about taking away what the family is consistent of. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, my, my, my family was victims, were victims to that. And because I'm, I have a lot of Aries in my chart, I have a lot of fire in my chart, excuse me, Leo and Aries. So I get really angry about these things. Like I don't mm -hmm. like I'm just <laughs> And so when yeah. my mother would tell me, or my sister would tell me, you have to do it this way. And I'd be like, no, because, you know, re your reality is not my reality. Um, that became what I became fixated on. So when people tell me, oh, you have to pay your bills with a fiat note. Now I understand that they're completely full of crap for one, that they haven't read anything about the law. And really they're just fixated in their whole identification of what it's like to be a slave. And unfortunately, 
and fortunately, because this is the darkness that brings us really out um, into our true, um, uh, I'm going to say like, uh, what are we like demigods? You know, we have mm -hmm. all this ability, have all this power. It's not just that we have the ability to create, but we also have the ability to make contracts. Mm -hmm. We have the ability to consent and to agree with our observation, with our voice, with um, whomever. And this is the fundamental principle for how our legal system is working right now and how our law system is working right now. So, um, yeah, I'm going to stop right there so that you can. Well, well, I love what you wrote. You wrote uh, when we were taking notes for this is uh, you wrote to me by law, people have a choice to choose where they belong in the grand story of this matrix and without being subject to outside sources telling them what to do and what not to do. And I mean, that does sound like true freedom <laughs> to me, you know, having your own choice and learning that you have that ability to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And what's yeah. hard about that, Joey, is that, okay, say you read all the laws and it's right there and it shows you exactly what to do. And it's made, it's not as difficult as they say, go protest, you know, in front of Congress and let them know what you think, go make a, a petition. No, it's not anything like that. Those are for mm. a different kind of class of people, which are persons. Um, but imagine Joey, you got, you have all that in front of you, right now, how difficult or how much do you have to grow and to shift out of, in order to be able to receive mm. all of the inheritance that God has for you. So we That's find it's such a spiritual process, right? Yes, such a exactly. Spiritual process. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. even when I work with people to say that, to clear contracts or to previous debts, they can they go through it, right? And they read it. But often what happens is they go, oh, no, 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 I'm too scared. I'm too scared. What, what happens if I do this and then I'm going to get in trouble? Mm -hmm. and that, what that tells me is that they don't fully believe in, in what their creator has for them. They don't fully have the belief in the creator. They're still putting their energy into something that does not exist, but has become something because we've all put our consent and our energy into it. So, Yeah. I want to I want to quote this too that you wrote spirituality is about living true to your divine and higher self through awareness and attention and when we contract and believe in a make believe world we start to diminish the spirit's ability to express in its own authentic way so equity law brings us back to peace so that we can assume that position I just I just loved that it's so spot on <laughs> it's beautiful yeah. And, you know, I was, I was doing a, I was doing a podcast with uh, Damon Cart, who he talks about the self-concept model. And we were talking about that when you're living in your highest values, like peace, that you are truly living in authenticity or as, or as you would say, so sovereignty. And so can you talk more about like how you would define sovereignty and what it means to really be a sovereign being? Yeah. Um, sovereignty is a, um, is a fluid word because um, we are sovereign people. So it takes a people to be sovereign and sovereignty can be passed on to something else. So sovereignty is a power, is an ability to do something. So let's just take an, an example of what happened with the, with the union of states and then the creation of the United States and, and then the creation of all the corporations in, in line with all that. So when the people came together and said, okay, God gave us these rights to, to live in peace as what we can see nature does. And God gives us this right to go ahead and have um, a thought process that allows us to truly attain what is our, what is our perfection of happiness and gives us the ability to do that, our, our energy to be able to live every day, to build whatever those, those aspects that authentic self wants. And then the people came together and said, hey, we need to protect these rights that God gave us. So in order to do that, we have to give an authority to somebody else in order to assume the position to be able to protect those rights. And then when that authority was vested to somebody else, we gave just a little bit of our power away. Hmm. And so we gave them our ability to make decisions. So it's it's really through the process of administration. So when we gave up a little bit of our authority to the state, the state that you were born, right? Mm -hmm. um, then that state went ahead and created uh, 
corporate standing. And then the corporate standing is what we contract with as living beings, and we assume to be ourselves underneath. So sovereignty can, is within a state. It can be a sovereign state that's necessary in order to be um, and to be a sovereign state. You have to be able to pay your bills to not be at war, right? Um, to be sovereign is to have full integrity with your uh, rights. So what are your rights? So I like to talk about rights when it comes to the legal and lawful aspect of things, but I'm hoping I'm, I'm making this kind of clear about um, what is sovereignty because it's a very fluid word and we can give it up uh, pretty easily, but we can also retain it fully within ourselves and within other people. Um, mm -hmm. When, as soon as we receive a right, as soon as we give up that authority, we now created a right, which is a duty and an obligation. So um, we have a, I have a duty and obligation to you, and that is your right. And you have a duty and obligation to me, and that is my mm -hmm. right. And that is not to infringe on any of my happiness, or I'm not to infringe on any of your happiness. That's true. That's true sovereignty. Hmm. And absolute sovereignty and then there's independent sovereignty and if someone was very curious i would go look at the black's laws dictionary and kind of do some um you know researching on the whole aspect of sovereignty and it really shows the picture of how we slow we have all this vested power and then over time we have given it up through contract given up our sovereignty to other and en other entities that they have sovereignty and then it so forth it keeps moving out you know, into what we're in now is the industrial corporation kind of thing that's going on. Exactly. I hope that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very clear. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. So through the process of of clearing these contracts for benefits and becoming, as you like to call it, legally fit or competent, uh, we can have this full freedom and truly. You say that we can have full freedom and truly inherit all that God the Creator has for His people. So. I want to impact, unpack that a little bit as what it means to be legally fit and competent in, in order to remedy, and we can talk about remedy, our status and, and start to clear these contracts. Yeah, so there's a saying in law, um, ignorance of the law is no excuse. And what is ignorance? It's to ignore, to believe that it's not there, to um, just completely turn your back against it, right? So we have law libraries filled with information about how the law and the legal system works. And they give very specific processes to relieve yourself of any duty or obligation that you have committed yourself to. And this could be a contract for a house. Okay. So I just want to back up real quick with that. The birth certificate. What is the meaning of birth? So if you go into the Black's Laws Dictionary, it says, to wholly come into separate existence. And holy is W-H-O-L-L-Y. So what are they saying? They're creating whole peace, but at the same time, they're creating something that doesn't exist that's separate from you. So what does that birth certificate represent? It represents the name. And what is that name? That name is becomes property. The property is of what your parents give to you. And because of your, the original contract that was made, it was a trust. It was an, a, a trust between the state and the parent. And then the baby was held as the collateral. And that's you, that's me. So technically we're all trust fund babies, right? Not only do we have a trust that's set up with our name on it, but we also uh, carry all the energy that gives it the ability to exist and gives it all the credit to exist. And this so is I, free for us to know, but we just, most people don't know this, but it's out there. It's, it's in writing. So exactly. Yeah. And the law says the way, the way the law works is they have to, you have to stake a claim. You have to make a declare a declaration and declaration has happened in fact, that means that it's written in words and then it has to be noticed to the public. So they notice us all the time, letting us know that this is happening. Hmm. But if we just, if we pay attention a little bit more through awareness, getting through those emotions, say when you get a bill, like say you get a tax bill and they mm -hmm. say, you're on notice um, for this much money, we're going to take your property away or that we're going to put a lien on you. 
what happens in that moment to that individual? Usually it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, and then all this emotion comes up and then it's so hard to break free from those, those energetic ties. And that's what it is that we, we have to clear in order to find that answer because the answer is there. So to go back, so when we grow up and we start making contracts, we can only contract, we can all, living cannot contract with the dead. And the dead mm. is to be something that doesn't exist and it's on paper, okay? So as you know, like the corporation, the United States, it doesn't have a pulse, you know? Corps, right? Corp, corporation. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. we, we carry energy and then it's hypothecated against to create a level of credit, as many people understand. So as we get through um, our older years, we start to mature, we start to use this name that has been registered as a vessel, right? Because we're in water mm. world. This is all about contracting originally started in the water world, not on land. So we start contracting with all these other vessels as a vessel. And then in those applications, we give them our name, we, we, um, we basically gave them the authority to go ahead and do what it is they want to do. And then through that, they have the presumption as well as us that we presumed ourselves to be something that we're not, such as the corporation itself. That's why many people identify as a U.S. citizen, right? Mm -hmm. but they don't understand that a U.S. citizen is the one that gave up all of their living rights in order to receive benefits from the corporate structure. So as we go through life and we continue to contract, we're making all these binding agreements. But here's the thing. If you're making a contract to pay for something, but you live in a state that's been um, showed under law, the Emergency War Act of 1933, that says that we're at war with the United States Corporation, that we don't have the money, that the money was given from the state to the Fed. So there's no such thing as a sovereign state anymore. In this specific location, it isn't until the um, the contracts have been cleared with those corporations, with the people, to be able to say, um, we're not going to give you our vested interest anymore. We're going to take this all back for ourselves, because this is what God wanted for us and his people, right? So, um yeah, contracting, creating obligations um, and duties. Every time when you sign your name, you, you have... You created rights, you created more rights. You um, have to perform by the letter of the law, whatever that contract says, because contract supersedes the law. So as you say, the competency is changing what we have once agreed to. We can go back and this yes. is done in writing. This has to be done through documentation. Yes. So our competency is based on how much, um, how much we know and uh, of the law. Right. So the law says that um, that people who gave authority to the corporation or to the Congress, they themselves cannot supersede their authority above the people. But how is it they're able to do that these days? How? Because we're no longer considered ourselves to be people. Instead, we considered ourselves we're considered presumed to be belligerent, non-competent, which means that we don't understand how the legal system works and um, we're considered to be dead. So um, when you come into a courtroom and you're staking your claim, what jurisdiction are you in? Are you in the magistrate court? Are you in the legal system? Well, that just shows that you're not living. How is it that you can expect to receive your living God-given rights if you have contracted them all the way to be assumed as something that you are not? And that's fraud. That, that means that um, you just said, screw you, God. I don't believe in anything that you have for me. And I'm going to go on this line of path and um, yeah, I'm totally enslaved and they're taking my energy for whatever it is that they, they benefit from. But here's the thing, <laughs> my own process, I understand that this is, not, uh, this is not about them against us. They're mm -hmm. only doing exactly what it is that we told them to do, that we said it was okay to do because okay. we chose not to read. We choose mm -hmm. not to be legally fit. So when someone has a problem, in the courts say with a ticket and they decide to get a lawyer, go look at the word advice. The word advice basically says that as a merchant, you are giving away a gift to another merchant for his benefit. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what is that gift? The gift is the, the record. What's on the record? What is the claim that's been made? 
So a contract, the application, go to the Federal Reserve Act, go to the Federal Reserve website and go look at their codes, Title 15. Talking about the application is the credit. Why is that? Because everything is relating back to the name, which is the property, which is back to the trust that it's really originally being held. So when we, I just want to say this real quick, mm -hmm. when we say we don't agree with what's going on, and then we start making arguments, all we're doing is showing that we are more belligerent and incapable to take care of our own estate, because we already are not following the administration laws that have been put into place for the titleship that we carry, because the birth certificate is a title. But then we're also saying you need to, you need to learn your own law. Right. When we're when we're standing up and we're acting completely corrupt. Hmm. So we are to blame, but we can yes. we can we can take back that sovereignty. And wow, and it takes humility. Yeah. Obviously. Right. You know. And it is it truly going back. It is a spiritual journey. It really is. It yeah. Really is. Imagine all those all those police officers that maybe uh, heckled you and how angry you are with them, you know, and how all that anger leads up to all this angst to go ahead and, and, and put your foot down. But really what you're doing is just you're causing more controversy. Mm -hmm. And if you look in the dictionary, what is controversy? It means that you're at war. How is it that you can be a God's child of peace, but you still be at controversy with the legal system that you put into place? And, and here's the thing is that law stems mm -hmm. from natural law, because what the law is, is nature created creation and the law is put into place to protect creation in order to keep it going so it's the law now is everything of our our own response to what nature is so that's why in common law it can continue to change and that's why in legal law it can continue to change more statutes more codes based mm -hmm. on what the people are saying and what it is that they want so the common law is a reflection of what the common people feel and think in relation to what nature is and the law has been put into place to protect what is natural so that's why the legal code is here because it protects the living from the dead by keeping the dead at bay and within their own lane. So they can only operate within the world of corporate structures. They can only operate on paper, right? Now, if the people start getting uh, programmed to believe a specific kind of reality, then naturally their choices begin to change the legal law, not natural law. It doesn't change natural law. That never changes. They just start becoming more and more, more and more, more and more boxed in to a little containment field, which is also known as a civitus, that allows them to operate at the level that they want to operate at. And if they want to be completely belligerent against the law, they can be. That's why they have exemptions. That's why we have licenses. Why do we carry licenses to drive? Because we're all being licentious, which is a sexually immoral, offensive why is it that we're all being sexually more? How is that possible? Well, because we all contracted to be uh, a fictitious entity. And that fictitious entity doesn't have any rights to use the public right away. Only the corporate structure has to get permission in order to use those public right of ways for commercial purposes. So through our own lack of understanding, we go ahead and contract because we believe that we have to. And then through having to, we start creating more rules because they're saying, oh, you don't understand. You don't know. This is what you're agreeing. Okay, fine. Now we have to um, put more rules on you to make sure that you don't act out. Hmm. Why is part of uh, the Libra code? Why police officers have to walk around with badges? Because they're showing us that we're in the middle of wartime and they're really here to keep the peace. But wow. since they're now contracted in with the corporate structure, who is it that they're truly representing? So it all goes back into um, our own individual choice to become aware and present with our own right. feelings and our emotions and related to what reality is and what, what is believed to be true. And then also going back to what are the facts? What has been written before us? What is the history and then it says it all in the law. If you just go to the dictionary, the Black's Laws Dictionary, you look at the word warrant. When you get, a, I had a warrant, my person had a warrant, excuse me. <laughs> it freaked me out. Why? Because 
I had no registration or no insurance and no license. And luckily I was on a, a native reservation, so they couldn't take my car. But see, at that point I was running with sovereignty, but not fully with the understanding of exactly how to handle the situation, exactly how to handle a contract. But in that moment, I signed the contract, which is okay. God, God forgives you for the mistakes that you have made if you repent. But when I signed over, I said, I'm doing business with this police officer. The police officer went ahead and took it further. I went to court. I said a specific spiel that I didn't fully 100% understand. So therefore I fell off and I walked back into the legal world. So I'm no longer living, right? And then they continue to go on saying, now we have a warrant out for your arrest. What is a warrant? A warrant is the money to pay. Hmm. But instead in my mind at that time, I was freaked out three months in jail. I don't want to pay $3,000. And also I don't want to go to jail for three months, <laughs> but I don't have to do any of that. It's only through my own consenting authority. Do I do that? Now I'm given something here, a warrant. And what is that? It's a notice. What is a notice? It's a liability. So I have a liability presented right in front of me and I have to clear that liability. I have to clear that contract in order to not allow my body to be used as the payment for wow. the controversy that was created by me driving and not understanding how to be fully living. So how do you clear that liability? So this is how through administration, huh? How did you go about clearing that? Yeah, so this is through an administration process mm -hmm. and it's through acceptance. Okay. If you look at the, the word honor, in the Black's Laws Dictionary. What does it mean to honor? It means to accept a bill of exchange. What is acceptance about? If you go to the bank, what do they do? They accept your check, right? Mm -hmm. Your name gives credit. If your name gives credit, that means that under the Uniform Commercial Code, which is the uniform code that's been internationally adopted to perform right. these contractual processes within um, legal land, within maritime, so the administration process, and it consists of acceptance, which is to accept it as paid. Okay. And rather than creating more liability, which is giving them more promissory notes or IOU notes, which is also known as the Federal Reserve notes, the dollar bill. So that is in your, these are in your rights. So I want to talk more about that. Like what is rights in, in terms of equity law as as opposed to the rights that we think we we have or don't have you know in this matrix so um this is a good opportunity to explain that equity what equity is about so mm -hmm. equity is recognizing the value right it's not just something that you equity is not just something that you put into your home like you have from building it up equity is really the human being because mm. it's it's the name so equity is the um, jurisdiction that created commerce and it created commerce and it created the, the legal system in order to create, to keep justice in line, okay? Because we have the living and then we have the non-living and both of them are out there in the world and they're doing things. So equity provides a set of principles, maxims of equity that when one sticks by them, they're no longer deemed as something that they can remedy the situation. So specifically with um, contracting. So this happens in a couple of ways. So like I said, the Emergency Act of 1933 says that we can't, we don't have any lawful way to pay for our bills. All we have the right to do is discharge. Our bodies and the land have become the credit that allows everything to keep going. So there's that aspect. And then there's this aspect that equity says, well, um, anybody has the ability to repent, right? For your sin. Mm -hmm. And repenting for your sin is basically saying, I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to contract. I rescission that. Okay. That's equity and honor, right? You talk about that. That's being yeah, an honor. honor is, yes, exactly. Um, and when acting equitably, that means that you get to receive all the equitable Ability that comes with your own existence within this matrix. So, you know, what's so interesting about the word matrix. It actually means contract. Oh, when wow. you have a contract, you create a matrix. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So we have the three, 
three jurisdictions of, um, well, technically international maritime that kind of belong together, common law, and then equity. Equity oversees trust law. Right now, what we're operating in is with a trust, like I said. So in trust law, it says that you have to have five things to have a trust. And I'm not going to name all of them. But one of the things is having a trustee, the one who's going to carry the liability to go ahead and perform all the duties that are necessary for the benefit of the beneficiary. And then you have to have the grantor, the one who says that they have all this collateral and are willing to declare it and to put it somewhere for the benefit of the beneficiary. Now, so we're operating within trust law. And then since we carry a title and it's the split title, which is also known as a, um, a fee simple title, a simple fee title, we have to operate ourselves according to what trust law says. That means that anything that is accrued against the trust, because in trust law, you can't accrue any liabilities. You can't cause problems for the trust as a trustee or else you become personally liable. You're the ones that has to go to jail. Mm. So by law, we have to administer the trust according to what the trust equity says. And equity says that um, we must discharge. Equity says that um, we have to show ourselves to be equitable and competent in face of the judge. So like, say, when you're going to court and you have a controversy that's going on, say you're the defendant. And then the judge is going to see based on how you present yourself, what jurisdiction now are they going to practice? Now, if you come in as a living being, you don't operate on the general standards of what the public does. That means you don't sign in. That means that um, you don't state your name. You're not there to testify. You're not mm. going to create more of a controversy. You're there to clear and settle the matter through the process of acceptance. And that's what trust law is about. It's about doing everything according to trust law is the highest law nobody can go and penetrate into a trust and you know that's that's why everybody wants a trust right now is because they're trying to protect themselves but here's the thing about equity if you understand equity you know that you no longer need to protect yourself because you understand how to talk to every single public agent in order to keep mm -hmm. yourself from contracting into something you don't want and also how to keep the courts um, from infringing on your own uh living rights you know, when you're born onto this earth, you're not born in chains. You're not born in cuffs. You're not born to go ahead and start, you know, uh, doing all these things. No, you're born in a family. And that family was, was sitting on a land and they were access to fruit trees or, um, you know, like when you go pick a mango off of a tree, you don't have to pay a dollar or two. You see? So how is it that we as a living being can start to rescission all these contracts and start paying the lawful way instead of continuing to create more promises and then paying with our bodies mm -hmm. it's through the process of equity it's by rescissioning contracts and doing what is honorable which is discharging your debts so Can you talk about what what is the maritime if people from maritime law because you were saying there's trust law and then maritime yeah so maritime maritime i'm sorry so Back in the day, all contracts, all corporate contracts were represented by the flag, right? Which we still see now. Mm -hmm. All operated within the water world, you know, ship to ship, ship, ship to dock, right? Like when we have a doctor who does the birthing. So documents, Mary, documents. Yes. Right? So Mary, all spell casting, all these words. Yes. And the, yeah. yeah. And um, so maritime is a jurisdiction for commerce to operate which is all based off of bill of ladings, basically, which are pieces of paper that says um, specific words that um, show that there's cargo mm -hmm. and there's somebody gonna pay. So maritime operates fully in the world of contracts and, okay. and can only exist by fact, by declaration. So when, when uh, a judge says, state your name for the record, and then that individual states their name for the record. They just said they're going to pay. That's what they said. Mm -hmm. And then they say, no, I'm not guilty. Then they say they're not going to pay. And then what are they, what are they now? They're crazy. They're, they're double-minded. They're belligerent. So and it's simply because we don't know the law. It's simply yes. because we don't know. 
Yes. And whatever trust God gave you, you completely obliterated because you don't want to be, um, you know, whatever reason, you know, they got us distracted with all sorts of kinds of things to keep us from not only doing our own spiritual practices that it's spiritual hygiene, but also keep us from, from reading what's there. So, you know, that we can create the world that we want to, because it's fully plausible and we don't have to argue. We don't have to fight. All we have to do is just be intelligible and understand um, who we are and who we are not and the mm. nature of a contract because everybody mm. has a right to contract everybody no matter whether you're in maritime or common it doesn't matter you have the right to contract common law is where we belong but common law hasn't always been um, fair like in the day i think I've, i said this to you before um they used to drown uh people to see if they're innocent and if they uh, stayed, if they ended up living through the drowning effect, they were considered to be guilty. And if they died, they're innocent. So the common mentality can often be, can sometimes be a little skewed too, right? Which is why equity comes along and says, hey, we have, we have a way of things have been precedents based on specific rulings. And, and it's been justified, weighed out, it's been reasoned with, and so now we know that based on equity, that these common principles will apply the way that it used to be. So equity is a really, a really great way to keep everything equal. And it also applies in commerce. Commerce is designed to have everything be equal. All corporations are to be treated equally, you know? Yeah. Corporations have rights too, but they do not supersede the living rights only until we allow it to be that way. And it's for ignorance that it happens. And right now, in this moment in time, we're faced with either not knowing or knowing. And if we don't know, then we're going to be led down another path, which is going to continue to bind us. So, and then it, those who do know are going to go down a, a, a different path and they're going to receive all the inheritance that God has gave to them. Because there's, here, here's the thing, once we've matured, and it even talks about in the law and the court ruling, once we sure we can, we, and we understand the nature of what's going on, we fully can claim and receive all those equitable titles. Hmm. And through that, that's when we can start using the benefit of what the name is. Why should we have to pay in order to survive? Where does that mentality come from? Who pushes that into our mind? <laughs> and then, it, and then it's right indoctrinated for sure. It's exactly, it's definitely hard to, to think otherwise. Yes. And it's not the law. Yeah. It's not what the law says. And the law is based off of what is natural. Nature wants to continue um, procreating. It wants to continue its creation process. Hmm. Why is it going to create, make us have to enslave? Slavery is not natural. And that was the right. whole, that was the whole point of originally of the sovereign people coming together and creating a sovereign state is to avoid those kind of situations. And that's why we have things like the, the Constitution of the United States. It's to keep those corporations intact from whatever bylaws and standards they're supposed to operate in and making sure they don't infringe on those of the living. So what's great about all this, like I said, God is very graceful. We can repent. And repenting, we can repent to them too. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. When you make a mistake, it's a and they made a mistake, it's called a mutual mistake. Hmm. And you can look at the word rescission, R-E-S-C-I-S-S-I-O-N. Okay. It's spelled a, def a different way too, R-E-C. But res represents the body of the trust, the collateral of the trust, right? And then scission to cut. So we're hmm. taking out the body of the trust when we clear out a contract through rescissioning. We're no longer giving them the energy to charge us with. So Merlin, do you remember the movie Merlin, the 1991, the one with um, a famous actor from uh, the dinosaur movie? I can't remember. What's his name? Anyways. I don't think I know Merlin. The there is a uh, Mab. She's the, the evil one. She's mm -hmm. the one that created Merlin, right? Who ends up saving everybody, which is interesting. The darkness creating light and then the light or superseding the darkness. So it becomes bigger, right? In the end, the only way that people could get rid of this evil woman, Mab, was through ignoring her, no mm. longer giving her the energy. And then she became weak. 
They no longer believed in her. And then so they know she no longer existed. It's the same thing here. Do you so, think that's possible? Uh, but on a collective, or we just need to, it's my responsibility, for example, to do that within myself and to, and to pursue these things. And then, but what about the collective? Like my mind goes to, what about everybody else? And, and don't we all need to do this together? And, and we all need to start ignoring together. But, and you're saying, well, these people are going to go this way and these people are going to go this way. And, and so maybe just talk a little bit more about uh, our responsibility as individuals and then as a collective. Okay, yeah. So something with spiritual law is that you recognize that you can't do somebody else's work, right? Mm -hmm. And then also with spiritual law is that um, you can't, nobody else can decide for you what your reality is. Only you get to decide for that for yourself. So there's no way mm -hmm. in hell, excuse my language, that somebody who does not know how the law works and continues to be corrupt and wants to act like something that doesn't exist and then wants to claim for rights is going to be deciding of my reality when I'm over here doing different, um, when I'm completely on a different frequency, there's no way that's exactly. gonna happen. What's exactly. gonna happen is I'm gonna create another world naturally. Mm -hmm. The world's gonna open up. And then those who align with me are gonna also be a part of that. I love that, that's great. So here's also something that I had to learn in my own process with this is that I can't help everybody. Mm -hmm. And um, I can only help those that are willing to help themselves. So I think that's one of the ways that we get distracted here too, is that we, and you know, Santos Bonacci kind of helped me with this one, is that we think that to be the, you know, the, the most greatest person is to go ahead and always help other people, right? But here's the thing, we're not, we haven't helped ourselves yet. Hmm. How is it that we can expect ourselves to actually portray to somebody else the true identity of freedom when we haven't? fully gotten there yet no we're, i mean i've re, i've been into multiple distractions where i'm so fixated on other people's problems oh they they have court problems oh they have they have whatever problems credit card issues and i haven't fixed my own problems I have my own problems <laughs> yes <laughs> what is that that i have to go through i have to go through another um transmutation with my own self i have to go and find out why is it that i want to deny myself of this true freedom by continuing to try to give it to other people when they can mm. receive or see it. And there's oh, the, so there's good. that, there's that, that scripture that says, don't throw your, don't cast your pearls to swine, you know, mm -hmm. which is why I'm very particular about, you know, like, even though I have the course, the equity course up, I'm not advertising on it. Mm -hmm. It's not for people who are just out in the public. who are going to see it. No, it's people who energetically align themselves to something yeah. more because I know that when they receive the information, they're going to do the work to be able to get there. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's important. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's That's beautifully said. Yeah. Wow. Well, and I mean, let's talk about freedom for a second. And, and you were saying like what that, what that means. And I mean, you know, I think it's, it's just a state of being and inherent to who we are, right? I mean, that's how I like to define it because if when I feel free, like it's like a feeling, like I know when I'm free, like it's not like I have to define it. You just know, right? It's like, and and I am I wanna get there. I wouldn't say I'm hundred percent like, ah, oh, I feel free in this world that we live in, but that's my duty to separate. I don't know if you would call it separating, It's uh, but saying I am not part of this I mean, how would you define it? Because I don't, I want to say I want to separate myself from the world, right? Like, I don't, I don't mean it that way, no. but I want, but I want to be free from like the corruption, free right. from, yeah, yeah. So you imagine you did a lot of studying, right? Your own spiritual process of understanding how to even get that feeling of freedom. Mm -hmm. And then you start doing those things. Well, it's the same thing with the law. So if you want freedom from having to pay for your own bills, you know, well, then you have to learn the law in order to understand how it's structured. Mm. Your job is now to align yourself to the identity of knowing that it's there and then going okay. and finding the information and then applying those laws in the same way that we would, we would apply any kind of manifestation laws or spiritual laws. Is it a true sense of changing my belief or changing our belief that it's actually there? I mean, and once we align with the belief that's there, then it's like, well, of course, why wouldn't I do this? Why wouldn't yes. I want this? And then when you're going through the process, 
like tr say you're trying to do documents or whatever, trying to do the acceptance process, how many things that come up, not even distractions from the reality world that want to, that are, are old patterning that are still being put into your reality that are trying to keep you from, from doing what it is that you're doing. So yeah, throughout the whole entire process, you're continuing to having to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and greater and becoming more integrated into the body saying, mm. this is who I am. This is what I want. And this is what's going to be created. And yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, it really is about that power of attention. I mean, I think this world is so, it's like the attention that, where is our attention? It's on the external world. And, and that's why I love meditation and, and really starting to, I mean, the kingdom is within you, that mm -hmm. whole idea. And that's where your power comes from. The God mm -hmm. within you, the creator within you. And this, I just think that's one of what keeps us from finding this stuff and being continuing to be ignorant to it is that the distractions of not being connected to that source of our, yeah. you know, it's, and, and so how, I mean, did you do meditation and when did, when did you just start to really get in alignment with that? So, like I said, when I was 24, I got really good at understanding how to um, manifest through the power of transmutation. Okay. You're basically taking any situation that's going on that's causing me controversy within, like, I'm having a problem with this, say, mm -hmm. why am I having an issue with this, with the way that she said something, you mm -hmm. know, or, and then taking that into my meditation practice and feeling it, mm. allowing myself to really go into the feeling, which then gets me deeper into what the frequency is, where is it coming from? And then through that process, as Dr. Joe talks about this too, it releases, and then through that release, we get to rechannel it into something else. So that's been my entire process with this. Mm -hmm. And it's been the that's only thing great. I've been doing a lot, really. <laughs> and that's so great. That, yeah. Also, how do we keep ourselves from being in trouble? You know, with the, this is all spiritual war. It's true. Mm. And the when fear, I, the fear, huh? the yes. fear of that trouble, the fear of getting in trouble for standing up for your rights, standing exactly. up. And that fear yeah. is exactly what they link on to mm -hmm. be able to pull you down. So how do you get away from the fear? By knowing what the law is. If you know mm. what the law is, then you have no more fear. You know, I'm that's doing competency, right? That's the competency. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's like, if, if I was comp, if I was confident or I would be confident in what I'm talking about, if I was competent in it, right. If I knew the law, then that confidence would grow. And I'd say, of course I can do this. Right. But the confidence isn't there because the competency isn't there. Exactly. Yet. And <laughs> Yeah. It's like the same thing with your meditation, right? You I start getting more familiar. It's that's what meditation is, is to know, mm. is to know deeper. Exactly. To know you're you're getting to know yourself. What is it that you truly when you start to why, how is it that I got involved with the law? Well, it's it's in my chart, my natal chart. Yes. Okay, but I didn't know that until mm. later. But really what it was is that I, I kept aligning to what true spiritual practice, what what the divine has in store for me. Mm. And then through that, it brought me more things to align myself even more deeper and clearer into more of what spirit wants for me. When I become fully integrated, that means I'm receiving all the abundance that God has for me. So that means that my outer reality would have to reflect that. So mm -hmm. they, they're saying, if you think that you're private, you're not, unless you're not paying for your bills with the federal reserve now. <laughs> so when you get to that point, of when you know enough law, enough legal code or how the whole thing works, works and operate. And you can honestly discharge your debts without having to use your own hard earned worked money. That's how, you know, you truly reached what the spiritual abundance, right? right. It, it comes back around to what you said from the beginning of you, you see, you have found that people have to learn it themselves because I can actually sit here and say, I believe you, Rebecca. I actually really do believe what you're saying, mm -hmm. but there's, but I'm still not confident in, on, in knowing it and knowing it and reading it and understanding it on a deeper level for me to yeah. be able to truly apply it. Right. And say, if you did yeah. just based off of what I said, then I become the surety. You're going to be coming mm -hmm. to me and saying, you said this, you said that you said this, mm -hmm. where is the sovereignty in that? Where is Absolutely. the self-responsibility? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is definitely a, a spiritual war. It's um, how much do you, what is it? Do you really truly believe in you, in your creator? 
or do you want to believe do you truly believe in what doesn't exist in all the chaos that's going on right there that they're choosing to put right into your face to continue to distract you from what's right in front of you you know i just want to give one story when i was um, yeah. uh this was really obvious to me because like i said i started learning meditation at a young age so my vibration was pretty pretty strong my aura was pretty strong a lot of the time you know i was constantly counseling people like in school at work and then um, I went through this month of, I was really upset with my family. I was really upset with my mom and my brother. And I didn't want to go through my transmutation process. I was still dwelling on it. I was still identifying to the whole feelings of it, of being a victim. The strangest thing happened. One night I'm house sitting out in the middle, way out Tucson. Okay. It's out in the middle of nowhere. And I'm in um, a big house by myself and the radio keeps getting turned on. Okay. On its own. And I'm like, okay, this is freaky. I'm turning off the, I'm unplugging it now because me turning it off is not helping. So I went to bed and it was a completely pitch dark room at midnight. I woke up. And then as I was about to start to fall asleep, my bed starts to shake. There's no joke. My bed's shaking. Like as if there's an earthquake. Wow. And then I start to hear a, a low humming sound. And then over to the left of me, I look over and there's a huge purple portal that's opening up. And I'm like, holy crap. In that moment, at the same time, I can't speak. Okay. So in that moment, what was happening, it was like, um, it was like my, I was consenting because of that whole entire month of me lowering my frequency and choosing not to transmute. I was consenting to something else to come mm. there, do whatever they want. But what happened in that moment is I had to really see what, when I get into trouble, I've trained myself so much that if there's something that happens, which I don't, don't find that happens anymore, but when it did, I just become extremely present in the moment, fully integrated in the body. And then things start to shift. Right. Mm. So that's what, that's what I did in that moment when that happened on the bed. And then when I did that fully became present, I be, I gained the strength back to say, I am with the God of Jesus Christ. As soon as I said that everything stopped. Wow. Now I knew that, um, I didn't know what would happen if I didn't do that, but I knew that this was a wake up call for me, Rebecca, you can't, you can't be in these lower states of levels. If you, you know, if you plan to go here kind of thing, or else this could happen to you. So imagine everybody's doing that every single day when they're engaging with some kind of video, when they're engaging with the conversation, when they're engaging with the news on some level, we are giving up this energy, this identity. And then they take from it back, you know? Mm. So naturally through our own integration process, becoming more present, we become more integrated with spirit. Naturally, we're going to attract ourselves, align ourselves to be exactly what it is that spirit wants to create its true authentic expression. My authentic expression, it doesn't want to go to work and, and receive dollar bills and have to do things that I don't want to do in order to feed my dogs. No. That's not what my authentic, my, my authentic expression is going out and dancing, you know, mm -hmm. um, going gardening, you know, those kinds of things that continue to regenerate life. You know, we're, 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 we're stored of energy. There's no such thing as debt. That's also a concept that I wanted to bring up. There's no such thing as debt, yeah. all a fallacy. And then when they say things like in the bank, everything's going to go to sh right. Well, they're also programming people. What are they programming people to do? Go into chaos, start pulling your money out. Um, but what people don't realize is their, their original application, their original, their name is what gives the bank the ability to do business. So as soon as you start to do that, you're not giving them any ability to do credit, to give any credit anymore. So it's, it's really that it's through our own beliefs process. And it, if you go to the law, it's all right there written for us. It says... So yeah. we don't have to live our lives according to the structure. We don't have to give it the energy and make believe that it's true because just because it's freaky, we have to go to where uh, in us, it says that it's scary. Why is a police officer scary? Go and sit with yourself. Go sit with that little girl with that little boy and go find out what mm. is it that little boy, little girl really needs from you. It needs attention. It needs your love. It needs you to know that everything's going to be okay. Calm yourself, your mind, your brain, and your heart gets to coherence. Like Dr. Joe talks about in that mm. coherent state. That's when the, that's when the healing begins, right? 
Same thing with this process. Heal, healing and really, like you said, you know your authentic self and what you want and 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 what values you know you hold. And and it's so would you say with equity and how you teach it, it it's almost a dual process. So you have to learn. You have to learn the law and you have to take the time and learn it. But also at the same time, you are growing spiritually. Like who am I? What who is my authentic self and how am I, you know, am I worthy? receive this am i worthy mm. to do this mm. exactly yeah that's good right right i mean because it might be so unconscious that we're not doing these things because of that that exactly. yeah yeah we're so wow. trained we don't we shouldn't go to the law books we've been so trained to avoid legal like i know i used to be like oh i i don't like the bible why? Because my, my mother, you know, she was Mormon and, and I heard all the bad stories. Mm. So I thought the Bible was full of crap, but now I know that the Bible has all the answers in it. It talks and everything else that is reflected is all reflected of the Bible. That's yeah. why, the I mean, it's literally a law book, right? I mean, it's partly a law book. It really, uh, yeah, it's very beautiful. It's very beautiful. It's very powerful. What is, where, where is it? our responsibility. So for me to stand up for my rights, and it's not like you said, it's not about, you know, protesting or anything, but, but it's almost an act of service, I would say to stand up for my rights, but also everyone's rights to be that example. Totally. And it does change things because they change, they change the rules based on what the people are voting for naturally through their expression every day. So like we can see this in the last five years, Mm -hmm. seven years ago, talking about the stuff, you couldn't find it anywhere. A birth certificate was very difficult to find. Okay. Mm-hmm. Even about the US citizenship, very difficult to find. Now go to travel.state.gov and go look at non-US citizenship passport and see what's there. They tell you all about it, about in the new passports, they say how to loss of US citizenship, how want to learn more about expatriating acts or how to renounce your US citizenship. That's because people, enough people have been making such a stink about this, Mm -hmm. that the administration process, the administrators, the ones who are facilitating the documents for us that by our authority are now starting to become competent themselves. And so they're starting to see, okay, now I get what these people are trying to do because I understand the law, because we have a lot of people who are, you know, in the authorship to do these things for us who don't understand the law, and which is why we have to teach them. And uh, there's a lot of older people, 70s, 80 people, 80s that I know that have been doing this for a long time, really pushing this, getting into a lot of trouble, being being put into jail. But ha- it has created something for us now. It makes it a lot easier to get whatever it is that we want done. So yeah, it's your responsibility to make a claim for what it is that you are and what it is that you are not. And it's your responsibility to to have the the enough wherewithal to go ahead and and state that claim to somebody else who's in that authority position to go ahead and make that change in your administration pro- file. That's when you start to change the jurisdiction. So no longer, if you're not long longer seen as a U.S. citizen, what are you then? You're a natural living being who has a a, a benefit of the republic of the state that you are from. And then you are invested fully with your living rights. Now, there's still more to that because there's still more contracts that we've created that have to do with um, currency, right? But the main aspect is, is um, once you start to make those claims, you're shifting what standards you're being held up against in, in the eyes of the law. So um, me not being a U.S. citizen means that I don't have to be here on exemption means um, that I don't have to follow statutes and codes like corporations do. It means that I have the living right to go ahead and and do whatever it is that I please, just as long as I do not hurt others or infringe on their ability to be happy. Because like I said, your rights to me are my duties and obligations to you. And my rights to you are your duties and obligations to me. So yes. So part of the program, part of the process, you would say is uh, in essence, renouncing your U.S. citizenship? So I actually, I, um, I do consultations for those kinds of things because I don't really need to teach very much about it because it's pretty self-explanatory if people just mm-hmm. go and read, but I, I do help them set them up for that process. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing that I teach is how to do the administration process. Me and a couple of other people um, teach how to do the appropriate um, discharge and acceptance process for any um, claims or contracts that have been created. And I'm being a little vague here on purpose. Sure. Okay. 
because, um, yeah. you know, there's a lot of possibility with this, a, extra, a lot of possible that people have taken and have received those possibilities, but I'm not going to go ahead and, and, and say for all those things, because I don't want people to think, oh, this is just for us to get rich. You know, this is just for us to, to be able to receive money or whatever, because that's not what this is about. You're, if, when you go through this entire process, you just start to see that money, it does not mean a dang thing. It doesn't mean anything. all it is, is just debt notes and everything else is tangible property, tangible. That means something. If you have gold, that's tangible, put it on your body, hold it. Holy crap. That energy is powerful, right? Mm -hmm. There's reasons to have those things, but money, it doesn't mean a thing. Okay. So could you explain legal versus lawful rights? Yes. So like I said, lawful comes from everything that is natural. Okay. Because okay. law seeks to protect what is natural. Legal operates fully on paper. So like the whole controversy that's going on right now with um, men having the right to have a baby, which is true. Okay. But it is also not true. And so people are kind of going crazy with this because they don't understand how this is happening. But if you understand the world of jurisdiction, you would know and how and why it's happening. Basically, any man who claims to have the right to have the baby is 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 saying that they don't they're not living. That they're no. fully only operating within the corporate structure. So yes, on paper, they do have a right to have a baby. That is true. But God did not create the man to have a womb, so you cannot have a baby. So, how is it that those two structures um, coincide if one person believes this and the other one doesn't. Well, what difference is it to you if you as a lawful, moral, sentient being who's operating according to what God's law is, you put the legal land in, in its place, that means it has no authority over you. What difference does it make if somebody wants to go ahead and play dead? It, it doesn't matter, right? You allow them to go ahead and, and make all the claims in the states that they can because that is their their, their, their legal right. That is what the legal world is for because it stands for everything that does not exist. It's an extension of mankind. It's not an extension of nature. Nature did not create the legal world. Hmm. So anything can happen in the legal world, which is why people have licenses, which is why there's exemptions. But in the lawful world, no, that ain't, that ain't the truth, right? We know that the truth. But we don't need to argue that. Just right. allow them to have their dead world. And we'll just go mm. ahead and step back over here and assume the authority over the dead world mm. so that it does not continue to, to infringe on our family rights, our, our family continuity. I mean, that really sums it up. That really explains it, the difference between law and legal. I mean, it's perfect. So you're not the name. You were given the name. You have a given name and your surname. You have a, uh, the last name and the first name. The last name and the first name is legal. The given name and the surname is lawful. This, below, this is part of your family heirloom passed on your last your your given your surname has been passed on to you and so your name is given to you and now that has become the way to receive credit to receive the ability to stake those claims with incorporation so you are not the name that operates that is the vessel that operates itself in the legal land you just have the same name right and, and you, you carry that, that lawful name forward and you continue to receive your inheritance that's been passed on to you and you continue to protect those things, right? With the use of your law name, but you don't um, identify to any of the identifications that have been given to you by the legal system because you know that's not you. You know that, that where they're operating is completely strictly on paper and they have no, they cannot arrest you. They cannot take your money. They cannot take your property. They can only do it out of your ignorance. If you do not read, go read what a lien is. How is it that people can get a lien? It means that you do not pay for whatever tax or obligation. If you've completely honored all of your bills through the administration process and they send you that notice, you know that's not true. Because it has to take a specific um, claim into court to prove that that individual did not pay their duties and obligations that are being owed. And the only way to properly pay is through the administration process of acceptance. And to clear, to clear a contract is through the process of rescission. 
So if one really wants to begin this process of learning, you know, and knowing that it's a spiritual journey and a learning process, um, where, where should, where should people start? Like, where would you say they will know that it's, it is, or they probably will just know, right. That, that this is, it is time to really get on this path of sovereignty. Yeah. I have a saying is, uh, I never do anything that I'm not inspired to do. Mm. So I'll only do what it is that you're inspired to do. If, um, if somebody's ready to take the journey and say they, they saw this, right. And they saw me and they're inspired. They literally feel the inspiration to go ahead and start, you know, say, um, contacting me to go ahead and start the process of learning or where to go. That's great. If somebody felt, uh, I should do this, but I don't want to do this. Um, Mm -hmm. this person doesn't sound too, um, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Your spirit is directing you in exactly where you need to be. So if it's something that you really want to do, then trust that it'll, it'll come to you and that these things are here for you already showing up because you already asked for them. So if anybody wants to, um, you know, go down the path that I'm putting down, (laughs) um, Mm -hmm. uh, they can reach me at, um, I first, I like to uh, get to know somebody before, uh, they really start going down this just to make sure that we're on the same page. Um, that they know that I'm not the surety for whatever it is that they're doing, that it's really up to them and their responsibility, but I'm here as a support. Um, they can reach me by email and then, uh, I will go ahead and start, um, creating those intro intro introductions. And then if they wanted to pursue the course, you know, I'll make that available and so forth. But again, I don't publicly advertise on the course. And that also is because I'm trying to stay in the private. (laughs) Well, I'll definitely leave all the information that your email in the, in the description and people, if they are inspired, genuinely inspired, then they can email you. So Mm -hmm. thank you, Rebecca, so much for this conversation. It was wonderful. Yeah. Thanks Joy, for opening up the space for it. It's uh, I'm really happy to see you doing what it is that you're doing because I feel like this is right in your wheelhouse. So I'm excited to see what more you bring onto your show. uh, Oh, thank you.